I am Mr. Ish and I welcome you to this video. I presented a video similar to this in my other channel but in this one we're going to be looking at two things. In that we only looked at one. Here we're taking this a step further. In this specific video we have to show that the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular bisectors. You have to understand what this word perpendicular bisector means with regards to a parallelogram so you can end up fulfilling this task. If you just draw a parallelogram and we can do that right here and we'll call this A, B, C, D. You know if you're looking at the diagonal, you can connect from A to C, you've generated a diagonal and that segment is called AC. You can develop another diagonal and you know that happens to be the diagonal BD segment. We have to prove that these are perpendicular and they are bisector. So there are two different terms there, the perpendicular term and the bisecting term. The perpendicular means that all of these will be 90 degrees to each other. We have to show that to be the case. So that's what we have to show as one thing. And then we also have to show that these are bisectors, which means these diagonals bisect each other into equal segments. And if I erase this over here and show it to you, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. This diagonal BD will cut AC into two equal segments, this segment and this segment. From here to here is equal to from there to there. So it has been bisected into two equal segments. The diagonal AC will cut the diagonal BD into two equal segments and those are it. From here to here it's equal to that. From here to here it's equal to that. So you have to show that to be the case. If this point here were called, let's just say AX, then we have to show that AX segment is equal to XC segment. And then of course BX segment is equal to DX segment. So there's a bunch of things you have to show. The perpendicular bisecting will in involve all of this and you have to show that to be the case. So how do we get started? And this should be a good learning experience. How about you start with everything with regards to this. Take a pair of parallel lines and then you cut them by two other pairs of parallel transversal lines. These are transversal lines but they're parallel to each other. You see this right here is a transversal line, they're parallel, but these are parallel lines. So when you do all of this, these four lines, they generate a parallelogram. If you were to identify this as psi, as angle A, you know by means of all the relationships that come about from this, you know this right here is A, this here is A, A, these are the corresponding angles then you know if this right here is A, this also must be A because you have that Z angle effect. This here is A, that's A, and this line is parallel to that line and it's cut by a transversal. That's the Z angle effect because it looks like the letter Z, Z angle effect. It's an informal name, but it's a good name. And that right there is it. By means of the supplementary relationship of a straight line, this is A, then this right here must be 180 minus A because these two will form a straight a line, a total of 180 degrees. Then corresponding angle, this should be 180 minus A right here. This should be 180 minus A. Opposing to this, the opposite angle, this right here must also be 180 minus A. So when you look at this parallelogram, we've determined all of the internal angles. All of these angles are determined. This is A, this here is A, this here is 180 minus A, and this is 180 minus A. We've gotten all the internal angles. With that in mind, now you can do something and this is what we will do. You'll take that parallelogram and we will bisect it and draw the diagonals. You see we've drawn the diagonals. We'll label these diagonals A, B, C, D. This angle over here was A. You remember this angle here was A. So this angle has been split into A over 2 and A over 2. Each of these diagonals splits their vertex angle equally. If this right here was 180 minus A, as you remember right here, 180 minus A, then it has been bisected into 90 minus A over 2. You have bisected that angle equally into two parts, 90 minus A over 2 and 90 minus A over 2. All of these triangles will have all of these same angles, A over 2, A over 2, A over 2, A over 2, 90 minus 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 A over 2 because the opposing vertex angles, the corner angles opposing each other were always equal in a parallelogram. So we've developed all of this. Now let's look at the perpendicular relationship first. I'll show you that. You have a representation which looks like this. 
this little triangle I'm plucking this out and I'm showing it to you right over here this angle here is in a over 2 as you see right over here. a over 2 this angle here is in 90 minus a over 2 we have to find this angle we'll call this angle X we know this angle should be 90 degrees but we have to show that to be the case each of these angles here should turn out to be 90 degrees and this triangle represents all of these triangles because they're all the same the sum of the internal angles for any triangle are 180. You have A over 2 plus 90 minus A over 2, which represents this angle, plus X is equal to 180. You can solve for that X. If you cancel this out with this, which you can, you have 90 plus X is equal to 180, and then X is equal to, you know what it's going to be, 180 minus 90, and it's 90 degrees. So you've suddenly shown this to be 90 degrees, meaning it's a right angle all of these will be right angles therefore any of these diagonals a to c and b to d will bisect each other at right angles creating right angles therefore they will be perpendicular they will be perpendicular diagonals we haven't talked about bisecting yet because we have to show them to be equal but we have proven the part that a c segment and b d segment will be perpendicular to each other in terms of their diagonal relationship because they're creating these 90 degree angles therefore each of these must be perpendicular to one another so the first part is done now we have to show that these diagonals bisect each other into equal parts so let's show you that and the best way to show you that is to blow up this image we have over here because it'll actually help us out by blowing it up we mean we're going to expand it and zoom into it you have a image which looks like this you have a B, C, and D, and then you have that. This we know was A over 2. This here was A over 2. We now know this is 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. That's 90. That's 90. This right here was 90 minus A over 2, and this here was 90 minus A over 2. This here is A over 2 because the opposing corners were equal in terms of their angles. This here is A over 2. This corner is equal to that in terms of its angle. Remember this was 180 minus A, 180 minus A, but when we bisect it, it became 90 minus A over 2. And that's what we have, 90 minus A over 2 right here, and then 90 minus A over 2 right over here. If you take any of these triangles, let's focus on this triangle down here on the bottom. I have an angle A over 2 right over here. This angle A over 2 opposes this side right over here. If you take any of these other triangles over here, even this one right here, you have this angle here A over 2, Remember, each angle opposes in a triangle the opposite side to it. The side opposite to it is this. Okay, I'm just erasing this again. This angle right over here, A over 2, opposes that side. And if that angle is A over 2 and this angle is A over 2, the sides that are opposing it must be equal to each other because equal angles have equal sides. That's a characteristic of a triangle. So we've shown that to be the case. This segment AC now has been split into two equal segments these two segments and we'll call this x over here ax segment should be equal to cx segment because they are all opposing an angle which are equal to each other equal angle equal opposing side now let's focus on this 90 minus a over 2 this angle right here this angle is opposing that side right over here we can just do a double line over there just to represent that let's find another 90 minus a over 2 we can look at this one right here 90 minus a over 2 this angle right here opposes this side and you can see it this angle is equal to that angle therefore the side that oppose those angles must be equal to each other so you're looking here now at a bx and then you're looking here at a dx segment these two segments must be equal to each other because they are opposing equal angles a over 2 angle opposing its side, A over 2 angle opposing its side, AX, CX equal 90 minus A over 2 opposing its side, which is DX, and then 90 minus A over 2 angle opposing the other side, BX, they're equal to each other, hence the sides are equal. And now you've shown that the diagonals are indeed bisected equally into equal segments. This right here would be the midpoint of each of their corresponding diagonal segments. So we've shown you that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Then we've also shown you that the diagonals bisect each other into equal segments simply by virtue of the opposing equal angles. And this proof has been completed. The video is completed. If there are any questions, you can always let me know and ask and I'll be happy to respond. Have a great day. Bye.